that every time I open the pages. Mr. Chine says, would you remain always young and would you carry all the joyousness and buoyancy of youth into your maturer years? Then have care concerning but one thing, how you live in your thought world. And the Bible says, Whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy he will be. And the Bible also say, says, if ye know these things, happy are you. So if you want to be healthy and happy, think right. Have this mind in you which was in Christ Jesus our Lord, it says the Bible. Now what kind of a mind was in Jesus? No hate, no dirt, no negativism, no failure, no sickness. It was the healthiest mind ever in human history. You can have the same kind of mind, and when you do, you have health, vigor, and happiness. Now, you see, happiness is dependent upon harmony. And you get harmony out of the kind of thoughts that you think. Harmony affects your emotions. It even affects your physiology. There used to be a man called Little Bill Miller. He was the physical trainer for the Cincinnati Reds. This was back when the Reds amounted to something. <laughs> when they produced championship teams. And on the side, he was a tennis coach. He would get a gore or a boy, and he would say to him, now the first thing in being good at tennis is to think right. You must think that you can do it, and then you must think happy thoughts. You must think harmonious thoughts. And he had a girl who had all the technique down finally, but she couldn't deliver the ball properly. So he said to her, Mary, I want you to hum or sing the Blue Danube Waltz as you swing the racket. So she got in tune with the music. The harmony was in the mind. The harmony was in the voice. The harmony was in the emotions. The harmony then came into the muscles, and she made beautiful shots and returns. She was healthy and happy because she was harmonious. Now, I belong to a golf club up at Pauling, New York. I very seldom play because I got too many other things to do. But I enjoy it when I get at it, but I'll never be written up in the sport pages. <laughs> but we had, a, we had a pro up there years ago named George Ferrier. He was a Scotchman, and he was a philosopher. Now, in those days, a golf lesson cost $10. I suppose it would be 25 now. And I used to take lessons of George, not because I particularly wanted to learn anything about golf, 
but he got over so many wise ideas that I could use in sermons. <laughs> and this one cost me $10. <laughs> I don't know what you put in the collection plate, but you can find the plates on the way out. <laughs> because this is worth its weight in gold. He had a New York City tense, uptight businessman, business executive. And he would get out on the weekends to play golf just as another duty. And he didn't do very well at it, and he didn't enjoy it very well. So one day George said to him, you know, the trouble with you is you're an unhappy man. And in order to play golf well, you've got to be a happy person. He said, happiness lubricates the muscles. And he said, Joe, what you need to do is to get lubricated. Joe immediately headed for the clubhouse. <laughs> but the pro called him back and he said, I don't mean that kind of lubrication. He said, Joe, can, can you sing? Well, he said, no, sir, I... I can't sing. Well, don't you know any songs at all? And Joe said, well, I know one song. Let me call you sweetheart. He must have belonged to the Rotary or Kiwanis Club. <laughs> all right, he said, Joe, what I want you to do is to walk around the tee singing at the top of your voice. Let me call you sweetheart. Well, Joe said, I never sang in public in my life. Well, the pro said, this is hardly public. So he said, do it. So he finally, in a timorous way, started to sing. Then he got into the spirit of it, and he went around the tea singing, let me call you, sweetheart, I'm in love with you. That's the first time I ever sang in public in my life. <laughs> I'm sure I'll never be invited to join the choir. <laughs> you know what he did? When the coach put up his finger, which was the signal to go into the stroke, he hit the ball in a beautiful stroke and it went 200 yards straight down the fairway. He learned the joy of the game because he found the harmony and happiness and health. You see, it all ties together. Now, it's only November now, but come springtime, there'll be hundreds of people in this congregation <laughs> singing, let me call you sweetheart, on many a, a golf course. You see, that is what being happy is. It's being in tune. It's being organized. It's being sensitized. It is felicity. And uh, Jesus says, these things have I taught you that you might know my joy and my happiness. Now, there are other things that are involved in, in happiness, and this has got to be said. If, if we've got people sitting out here that aren't happy or healthy, it could just be that you got something sour in your mind something that has disturbed the balance and the equilibrium, something that has siphoned off the ecstasy of human existence. Now, the old-time theologians call that by a three-letter word, sin. 
or it's called evil, E-V-E.